let's let's talk about where we are on migrants. Um, Fund of the Times today have got well, they've got seen an actual legal doc a document. They've seen uh, this document between the EU and uh, the uh, former National Security Advisor, the Prime Minister, where the EU has is basically said we're rejecting any possibility of a UK EU deal where we can have migration migrant return agreement. So if someone arrives uh, on a boat, cross the Med, they arrive in Italy, Greece or elsewhere, they claim asylum there and then decide, actually, this isn't a good deal. I'll make my way to Calais and then on a boat over to the UK. We can say you've applied for asylum in this or that country and we can send you back. The EU, closest aid to you, uh, Ursula von der Leyen on this issue, has said, uh-uh, <coughs> not going to happen. How are we going to deal with the migrant crisis if we can't return these people to those countries, given that we can't return them to places like Afghanistan and Syria and Iran and elsewhere? Well, what a surprise that story is. I mean, uh, this is the next step after leaving the European Union. This is Brexit bashing once again. And Ursula von der Leyen is one of the archetypal sort of anti-Brexiteers who will use almost any measure to punish us for leaving. And basically, this has been the case ever since we left. Um, the, the French deal, the, the attempt to get the French police to try and slow down or <clears throat> halt these migrants uh, has never been able to work simply because Macron doesn't want them in France anyway and he wants to punish us for leaving. I mean, they're all, they're all determined to make us pay. The only way we can possibly act now is to have the freedom of movement, the freedom of action to decide for ourselves who stays, who goes, and that means leaving the Convention on Human Rights, which is basically an arm of the European Union. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. It was a fascinating conversation, <laughs> the political classes in this country. You, you can't, this is, we, you know, nothing, nothing but the European Convention on Human Rights stands between us and tyranny. This idea that, you know, we, we'll suddenly be a terrible, terrible country. We'll be Russia or Belarus if we, if we, get, if we leave the European Convention on, on Human Rights. Um, ignoring the fact that this is something that, a, you know, a democratically elected government will have signed up to. And, democratic elected government can decide not to sign up to. Do you think Rishi Sunak and his cabinet have got the cojones to do that? That's the big question. I think, to be frank, this is now a, an existential issue for the Conservative government. If they don't visibly act on immigration, they need to do something about the bivvy stock on, get it back into service, get people on it, fill it up, and in the end, they're going to have to make a decision once the decision of the Supreme Court comes down on whether or not Rwanda is an option for sending migrants to. And that's going to happen, I think, in a few weeks or months. And we will know then whether we can or whether we're banned from sending people to another place for processing. And I think that that is the crunch point. If indeed the Supreme Court rules against because of the European Convention, then I think that the government has to decide to leave. And that's going to be a huge battle, not just against Labour and the many, many other shroud-waving critics, but also within the Conservative Party, where some senior members of Cabinet don't want it to happen. No, indeed. And in terms of the Bibby Stockholm, I mean, what an absolute farce getting it there. And then... And then the farce of 39 <coughs> migrants being on the boat, they discover that uh, it's got a salmonella. It turns out they did know beforehand, but someone didn't tell them was formally, or did they tell them formally, was this passed up? And then they have to return, uh, take take the migrants off. I mean, this is this is at farcical levels. Does this just tell us a little bit more about how abjectly incompetent the Home Office is? Or does, you know, the Home Secretary, Suella Braffman, does she, does she have a case to answer here, which is that they should have dotted every I and crossed every T. When, you know, when every human rights lawyer in the country is out to get you, you probably better do your homework. I, I think on this occasion, we've got to give Suella Braffman the benefit of the doubt. There's no doubt where she and her uh, ambitions and intentions lie here. The Home Office is... Uh, simply terminally incompetent and has been ever since uh, uh, John Reid, the former Labour Home Secretary, described it as such. Uh, and basically it's worse now than it was then. Yeah. Uh, it, it is now actively incompetent in the sense that it is out to stop this government as far as it possibly can. It's joined the sort of blob, I mean the blob is a certain overall sort of description of the opposition to uh, the Conservative Party. But it extends deeply into the Home Office and areas of the public sector, which decide that they know best. And they know that they don't want immigrants dealt with in the way that the Conservative Party wants them dealt with. In other words, they try to stop and limit the numbers coming here. And that's the only thing, the only way that the Conservatives are ever going to be able to restore their reputation 
as a viable potential government.